Before this video starts, a quick disclaimer. There are not many good visuals for this era of development, and as a result, a lot of what you'll see will be a combination of what little we do have and recreations done by myself and the community. These will be marked accordingly so you know which is which. Now, enjoy the video. Portal 2's development period is one of the most mysterious out of every Valve game. As while communities are fostered around the beta content of the Half-Life games of Portal 1, there is yet to ever be a proper community focused on Portal 2's beta post f stops cancellation. Combined factors such as a lack of any major leak and a general disinterest from the scene that does exist make it so that everything beyond f stop is hazy at best. But that all has changed in the turn of the year of 2022. Hey everyone, the name's Ozzy Flowell, and today's video is a special one. We will be diving into an era of Portal 2's beta never documented prior, an era of development that I helped figure out alongside the help of others in the Portal 2 beta scene. In this video, we will be discussing the beta storyline, scrapped characters, gameplay and everything we know about this era. So without further ado, it's time that we finally cover the core hub beta of Portal 2. No jokes from here on out, we will be talking pure documentation, so let's begin. To understand core hub's placement in the development time of Portal 2, we need to go back a bit in time. After the FSOP version of Portal 2 was canned, a few months of experimenting with new mechanics had begun. The design cabals at Valve had come up with new test elements such as lasers, light bridges, faith plates and excursion funnels, alongside ones such as slow fields, hover turrets and pneumatic diversity events. These were conceived in a period of time known as the Experimental Era, which began in January 2009, a month after the FSOP was cancelled. A few months into 2009, the Core Hub era of development would begin. While the experimental era was technically still ongoing, the core hub would be Valve's first proper attempt at a portal sequel with a new storyline in place. This was the main focus of the company throughout the year 2009. Core hub would last a few months in development, but would then be scrapped at a currently ambiguous date late in the year. The core hub idea would be replaced with a more linear version of its concepts, seen in the multi-core era, but covering that era would be outside the scope of this video and not as well preserved currently. So let's start things off strong. What's the story that the core hub era hoped to tell? The Core Hub Beta was the first iteration of Portal 2 to set up as a proper sequel, meaning that Aperture would be in ruins after the events of Portal 1. GLaDOS was dead and the only things left to run the facility were the personality cores who were activated at the end of Portal 1. This backfires as, as the cores would carve up sections of the facility for themselves, essentially creating a battleground and aperture between AIs. Who exactly the protagonist was in Core Hub changed midway through the era. At first, they used Mel, who was the protagonist in F-Stop, as Valve didn't want to intrude on Chell's story. However, later down the line, they decided that whatever protagonist they had didn't matter, so they brought back Chell as playtesters were disappointed to find out that GLaDOS didn't know who they were. Speaking of GLaDOS, she plays a prominent role here. When the player woke up in this iteration of Portal 2, they played through the first 12 test chambers of Portal 1, now depicted as being broken down and overrun with vegetation. They would have been led by a bunch of pre-recorded messages of GLaDOS, with the announcer character in the final game having not yet been conceived. It's presumed that the player would escape midway through and go into the backstage areas of Aperture before stumbling upon GLaDOS's room, and entering it to reveal a decayed and battered GLaDOS. In front of GLaDOS was an activation terminal, and you would be egged into doing so by the pre-recorded GLaDOS attempting to trick you into reactivating GLaDOS. You have breached the central core of the Aperture Science genetic lifeform and disk operating system. Pre-apocalypse, this would have been an act of criminal trespass and an opportunity for you to go to prison. As it is, however, this is a rare opportunity for you to become an honorary Aperture Scientist. Do you see a power object? The Enrichment Center invites you to pick up the power object and plug it in. Something will happen. Something wonderful. Ultimately, the player is in a situation where they are forced to progress by reactivating her, with no clear alternative options. Once she reawakens, it's revealed that she has lost her memories and doesn't remember what happened in Portal 1. It's unknown how exactly, but this would lead to you being tasked to go and find six personality cores who reside at the end of some test tracks that appear under the edges of the giant vista GLaDOS's room finds itself in. Now, GLaDOS's room would become the hub where you go back to after solving each test track. You need to gather up these six personality cores and bring them to a room located close to the hub, with each one helping repair GLaDOS. The player incentives for doing this is currently unknown. It's also not known how the game would have ended in this beta, with the main writing theory being that GLaDOS would have set the player free. This is not something we can say with certainty, however. Now that we know the story, let's review the characters that we knew were going to be part of the core hub. To reiterate what was said earlier, we had Mel as the protagonist, who was later replaced by Chell, and GLaDOS, who in this beta was known as Carcass GLaDOS, according to resource list leftovers in Portal 2. A lot of Carcass GLaDOS animation tests can be seen in Karen Perel's animation showcase of Portal 2, with the barely functional GLaDOS. We even see an animation test for how GLaDOS getting a core would have made her react. Very, very good. Very, very good. 
As for new characters, the core hub was planned to feature multiple new personality cores. Let's go over them. I want to talk about the Paranoid Spear first, because I know people mentioned that I forgot him. The Paranoid Spear was one of the first cores ever conceived for this era, still sporting the Portal 1 core design being the first developed. So, are they part of this beta? The truth is, the Paranoid Spear was cut very quickly. The main concept of the Paranoid Spear quickly evolved into another quite familiar core, as the general concept of an overly defensive and aggressive core, who has been abandoned in a room, went on to form the basis of the Morgan Freeman core. Yes, that was his actual Twitter name. The Morgan Freeman Sphere is a successor character to the Paranoid Sphere. Both of them share the same internal actor name of Sphere 01, and their basic concepts match up perfectly, with the Morgan Freeman core simply being a version of the Paranoid Sphere that developed way further. As a character, the Morgan Freeman Sphere was a very defensive and angry core, and it had been stuck in its room for a very long time, and as a result, grows very wise about the small space they're in. However, the moment the player takes the Morgan Freeman core outside of its room, it gets a complete shock seeing the outside world and doesn't know what to think of it. They would eventually warm up to the player, guiding them on the way back while stating facts they relate back to the room they are stuck in. The next character we know of is the Aquarium Sphere, who is based on the Oregon Coast Aquarium ad. It's a short ad, but it's just a goldfish muttering about how much they really want to go to the aquarium. We're not exactly sure how the Aquarium Sphere is meant to act, but the Aquarium Fish ad became a bit of an in-house joke at Valve, which led to the implementation of it as a core. While the final hours of Portal 2 mentions the ad inspired the idea of a core that was incredibly dedicated to a certain mission, he only ever kept the temporary aquarium dialogue Valve used and was never developed further. Now, our next beta character is going to be quite familiar to everyone who has a basic interest in Portal 2's beta. Say hello to Pendleton. This core was first introduced in the Core Hub era of Portal 2, and is meant to be a bumbling, frantic, and not so sure of himself British personality core. Pendleton, at this point in development, was also a core to have carved out their own section of Aperture. Finally, we only have one remaining confirmed character, and that is the Quint Sphere. Quint's here lacks a design entirely, since his inclusion was only a proposed idea, and we don't have any known look for him. The Quint Sphere was a core who was based on the Jaws character of the same name. Quint in the movie was a professional shark hunter, and the inspired version of the character from the Core Hub era was the Sphere who was on a mission to hunt GLaDOS down. Essentially speaking, GLaDOS was a shark. Earlier, I had mentioned there were six personality cores. And the unfortunate truth is that our four here, being the Morgan Freeman core, Cryum Sphere, Pendleton, and Quint Sphere, were the only ones to have any confirmed record of being at the very least proposed as a character. We are missing our fifth and sixth personality cores here, as we're not even sure of any proposed character archetype for them. Now, what's interesting to know is that our main four here are actually directly involved in the cores in the retail game. Pendleton is obviously an early version of Wheatley, Aquarium Spear is clearly the core who later become the Space Core, the Quint Spear is a very self explanatory predecessor to the Adventure Core, and the Morgan Freeman Core, a very wise character who provides facts to the player, evolved into the Fact Core. This is backed up by multiple claims that the concepts of the corrupted cores come from cores who got shelved early in development. So, now that our main overview of the characters and plot is complete, let's go over some of the more tangible parts of the Core Hub era. The visual style of the core hub featured decrepit Portal 1 styled environment throughout with a slight graphical update. Some test chambers, however, seem to have been interspersed with being pristine and clean, contrasting with the overgrown environments. I'll talk more about this in a later part. These decrepit Portal 1 environments would appear in the first few chambers of its Portal 2 iteration, formulating the very basis of the Portal 2 aesthetic, while still closely adhering to Portal 1's fundamentals. You can see an example of destroyed Portal 1 environments in the screen salt of Glass Chamber around this era. However, we have a lot of concept art, and while the maps themselves had not implemented the idea of overgrowth throughout Aperture, this is something especially emphasized in these overgrown concept art images based off simple destroyed Portal 1 areas. We even have concept art of Glaus's chamber. A lot. 47 pieces to be exact. You can definitely tell why this is called the Core Hub era with how much they're emphasizing getting the hub to look right. Glados can be seen in various iterations of, of her carcass form in these, including one that even depicts her in a more humanoid android body. There's also the presence of a lot of test chamber doors, which were the entrances to each test track the player had to solve. They were scattered around the exterior of the ruins of Glados' room. To break the visual concepts down into a digestible paragraph, Core Hub's visual style was that the first three chapters of Portal 2 was how the entire game looked, being a mix of the crappy aperture environments and pristine clean chambers. It seemed the reason for these clean looking chambers' existence comes down to two factors. A lack of an art pass, meaning that no developer had gone through it properly given these levels of decoration of overgrowth environments they wanted to do, and later down the line, the implementation of gel. As discussed earlier, Core Hub structure is quite simple. It features the first 12 test chambers of Portal 1 acting as the pre-hub, with the 13th being broken where the player escapes. The player escaping the query hub chambers and finding GLaDOS, and then going through 6 test tracks comprising a few chambers each, with the player's goal being to find personality cores at the end and bring them back to GLaDOS to help repair her. Originally, these pre-hub chambers seemed to use energy pellets still, long enough in existence so that a pre-hub GLaDOS line was done about them. 
This test involves aperture science high energy pellets and the manipulation of their direction in ways we cannot specify. However, please do not use your hands. But they'll swap that for lasers once they're brought in. From the leaked map file names, we know that lasers, faith plates, and slow fields all had their courses developed in the midst of the core hub era. Just to quickly explain what the slow fields were, they were a bullet time mechanic intended to be used to make things easier to perform, but they were scrapped due to being obsolete. You have just experienced an aperture science self esteem field which temporarily increases your reaction time. With the existence of elements such as light bridges, excursion funnels, and pneumatic diversity events at this point, it would not be too far off to assume that these last few test elements comprise the remaining three test tracks. We can validate these claims by, by the many map names we have from the robot repair leaks, wherein which we had the name of basically every map file name in the internal portal to repository, but none of the actual contents. You can make out some obvious matches and well educated guesses as to which test elements are part of the core hub era. The laser course was the most developed, as it contains the most references to quite a few completed puzzles, including the iconic triple laser puzzle. We're also aware of the core rooms for each track, the locations of which personality calls were meant to be found at. We have map file name listings for the laser course, the faith plate course, and the slow field course, which confirms the three trees' existences. All this comes together to form a very simple gameplay loop. Do a test track, fetch a core, and bring it back to GLaDOS, and do it again. An ending for the core hub was likely never conceived, as at an unknown date late in 2009, the general mechanics were introduced to Portal 2 with the hiring of the tag developers. This led to pristine clean chambers being made to house the gels. As questions arose as to why Aperture is using something like paint, the core hub era begins to come to a close. As gel was introduced, it marked a clear turning point. The core hub concept was not going to work. It was too ambitious, it required too many voice actors, lacked a sense of reasonable scope, and a lot of plot elements brought up too many questions that Valve couldn't answer. Players did not want to help repair GLaDOS after the events of the first Portal game. Trying to manage the difficulty curve with non-linear puzzle structure was a mess, and the characters were indistinguishable from each other. They're all just cores with different eyes and personalities being their only traits. Valve didn't have an answer for why the modern aperture facility would be using old fashioned paint in test chambers, and the gels didn't fit in derelict overgrown environment, creating a visual gameplay challenge. As soon as the 9 rolled to a close, Valve had cut their losses and scrapped the hub structure, marking the end of the core hub beta. Portal 2 began to transform into a more linear experience, and while the multiple cores would stay around for a good while longer, their fate was already sealed this far back in the timeline, only being killed off for good with Wheatley's popularity, E3 2010. Many test chambers from this beta would be recycled, such as Triple Laser, and elements such as the slow field scrap are not being intuitive. Pendleton would have his personality split off into Wheatley before being merged with Wheatley altogether, and the accounts of all the other cores would get their shoes filled by him. The Morgan Freeman Sphere, Aquarium Core, and Quint Sphere would all find second life as the corrupted cores, but ultimately they end up going so many changes since then, they become completely new characters. The hub structure lives on through the cooperative campaign of Portal 2. As a plot point of repairing GLaDOS to cycle it into a new form of helping her regain control of the facility with security disks, and test tracks are made into a linear experience. Ultimately, Valve had tried to experiment with the co-op structure in 2009, and while it lived on through co-op, they learned many valuable lessons about what they should be doing to develop the Portal 2 we got in the end. And so, that marks the end of this video. With Portal 2 2009 era now fully documented, the core hub beta can stand among F-Stop and the E3 beta as a clear and distinct part of Portal's development. I'd like to thank the Portal Series Beta Research Discord for the assistance in this long and treacherous journey of documenting Core Hub. Specifically, members such as Lightsavix for their expertise in figuring out this beta, and people like Wolf Clock who provided the early Morgan Freeman Spear texture remake used in this video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed learning about this previously lost part of Portal 2's beta.